Well, the title of the sermon today is what kind of power are you tapping into? What kind of power are you tapping into? And we will be looking at Acts chapter 8 verses 5 to 25 as our reading. Today is Halloween and it is the second most celebrated holiday in North America after Christmas. And America alone will probably spend about $10 billion on Halloween this year, which is basically on costumes and candy. On average, the person in America might spend a hundred bucks on Halloween. And you know, there's a lot of conversation about Halloween. On this day, there's a lot of talk about horror and, and being scared. And you will see some interesting things on people's uh, properties and their, on their homes. Sometimes I've seen um, like decorations of cemetery stones or ghosts or witches or brooms or even like dead bodies. And people like to get dressed up and have scary costumes and give out candy. And I guess my question to you today is, do you believe there are dark, evil and scary forces? Do witches exist? Um, does evil exist? Is there such a thing as a spirit of fear or a spirit of being afraid? Or is this just a, you know, a, a reality we made up and we basically have fun celebrating it and there really is no harm? Now, depending on who you ask, you will get a different question, different answer. My challenge to you today is if there is evil, if there are dark forces out there and a spirit of fear and a spirit of being afraid, um, as a Christian person, as a person who believes in God, you know, how can we be aware of it and how should we deal with it? I want us to take a look at a story in Acts chapter 8 because it's really going to help us answer those questions today. And here's what the word of God says. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks and impure spirits came out of many and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in the city. Now for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great and all the people both high and low gave their attention and exclaimed, this man is rightly caught, called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed, the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. And when they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not come upon any of them yet. They had been simply been baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, give me also the ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in the, this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may get, forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. After they had further proclaimed the word of the Lord and testified about it, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now that the word of God will speak and we know the word of God will speak because your word is good. Your word is perfect. Your word has the power to change. We thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins so that we could have everlasting life and forgiveness of sins. So right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit invested in me, may your words, may your power speak through the words I say and through this video to those who are watching. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the book of Acts and in the Bible, the book of Acts is a powerful book written by Luke. Luke also wrote the gospel of Luke. The Bible has four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And we say they're gospels because they're the good news about Jesus Christ. And in those gospels, we hear about Jesus Christ, who we believe is the son of God. We believe in God in the flesh. 
and he's the God who came to save us. He's the God who came to die for us. He's the God who gives us new life. And in the Gospels, we read about the birth of Jesus Christ, which is about why we celebrate Christmas. Then we read about the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, which is what we celebrate in Easter. And we read about Jesus's miracles. We believe in what he has done. And in the book of Acts now, Jesus is saying goodbye to his disciples and he's ascending into heaven. And he promised them the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We believe that God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father means our creator. Jesus Christ means he's our redeemer. Holy Spirit, he's our comforter. And the Holy Spirit would be our guide, Jesus says. He will remind us of the words of Jesus. He'll convict us of sin and he will cleanse us and he will help us. And in fact, the Holy Spirit did come, as Jesus said. In Acts chapter 2, the disciples were all together praying, and the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they received power. Then persecution began to set in for the believers of God. And in Acts chapter 5, you will read about a man named Stephen who believed in God, and they stoned him because they didn't like the fact that he was talking about Jesus. Acts chapter 8, due to his death, there was a scattering of the church. And this is where we read in verse 5, where Philip is there. And the Bible says, Philip went down to a city in Samaria, proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. There was great joy in the city, in the city. So Philip went, he was a believer in Jesus Christ, he went to Samaria. And Samaria, 750 years before this, the time of the story, was overtaken by the Azarians. And during that time, um, you had the wealthy Jews and the middle class Jews deported, but the poor Jews remained there. And those Jews intermarried with the Samarians. And so Samaritans are pretty much half breeds. And Jews did not like Samaritans. So the fact that Philip was going to Samaria to preach the good news. This is a bridging of a gap between two enemies, the Jews and the Samaritans. And the Bible says Philip went there. He preached the word and signs and wonders. People saw signs and wonders. They saw people who were lame and paralyzed become healed. And this reminds us today that believers in Jesus Christ can experience power in the right way, in the right way. Now, where have you seen this before? Where you've seen um, demons being casted and and people being healed. Well, we've seen this in the work of Jesus Christ. This is God in the flesh. When Jesus came on earth, he casted out demons. Now, what are demons? Demons, evil spirits, or unclean spirits all mean the same thing. And we believe that these are fallen angels. And the head leader is Satan himself. He was an angel created by God. He was good, but made a choice to walk away from the Lord because of pride. And it has been said, scholars have said that one third of the angels created in the heavenly realms fell with Satan. These angels, which we now call fallen angels, are demons, evil spirits, or unclean spirits. An unclean spirit is someone who denies Jesus Christ as Lord. It's mentioned 25 times in the Bible. And we have the word demon mentioned 79 times in the Bible. And this information I'm sharing with you today, I have read up a lot with Dr. David Jeremiah, who's got good work and scholarly work in this area. A spirit is an immaterial, intelligent being. You can't see a spirit, but the spirit is there. So the spirit is invisible, but you can see the manifestation of the work of a spirit. A spirit has intellect, emotion, and will. We understand there are three groups of spirit. There's God who is spirit, humans, you and I are spirit, and angels are spirit. Humans have a body, a physical body. Demons, fallen angels, do not have a physical body, but they can possess a body. In fact, that's what they want to do. They like to go into bodies, human bodies, we are considered hosts, so that they can do their worse work in us and sometimes a person can have multiple demons in them um they like to find hosts so that can they can do damage a demon or an unclean spirit or an evil spirit can cause a person to be blind can be deaf can be mute or insane and they also tempt us to sin like lie and steal and greed and sexual sin so a lot of these things that we're seeing around the world 
are really a result of a spiritual warfare happening between good and evil. And it is being run by the ringleader, which is Satan himself. Now, demons, they cannot read our minds and they can only be at one place at one time. So what we see here in the story is Philip preached the word of God. He demonstrated the power of God by, by the healings. And the question is, how did he do it? How did he do it? Well, he did it by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that allowed Jesus to do miracles that he did for other people, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same spirit that lives in you and I. When you give your heart to Jesus Christ, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit lives in you, lives in you. And when you and I let the Holy Spirit have full control in our life, we have power. We have power. Now, can you say that you see the power of the Holy Spirit active and real in your life? Are you tapping into the Holy Spirit and his power? What are some signs or clues that you can see the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? Now, in this story, we see that Philip went and preached the word of God, probably by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how I'm doing it, too. And then he saw people healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. The same can happen in our lives, too. And we also know in Galatians 5.22, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So here are some examples of how the Holy Spirit may be working and acted in your life. When you pray, do you see a breakthrough? When you pray for someone who is sick, do you see them healed? When someone is rude to you, do you show self-control and do not yell back at them? When someone wrongs you, do you forgive them? When you are tempted, are you able to say no? The person who is living by the power of the Holy Spirit is allowing the Holy Spirit to take full control. They're saying to God, God, you can have all of me and I want to see your power in my life. And when we do that, you will see breakthroughs in your life. You will see marriages healed. You will see sick people healed. You will see debts paid off. You will see doors open for you. Trauma healed, restoration restored, addictions broken, purity attained. Do you believe and do you allow the Holy Spirit to take full control in your life? Because when we open ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit and God's leading, he will lead us and he will direct us on the right path and he can bless us too. Amen. He can bless us too. You know, but what's interesting in this story is there's another man in the story and his name is Simon and he's powerful too. The Bible says he's a sorcerer. And what is a sorcerer or what is sorcery? It's a person who claims or believes in having magic powers or is a wizard. Verse 9 says the following. Now for some time a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great. All the people both high and low gave their attention to him and exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. So the Bible says this man did what he did through magic and he had followers, both high and low people would pay attention to him. He had their attention for a long time. He boasted about his power. And they even said, you know, they called him, this man, great power of God. And they were just like infatuated with him. If you actually think about it, like they just loved him and followed him and praised him and, and had high respect for him. So. On the outside, everything looks great. Simon has power. People are following him. People are amazed. But there's one problem in this situation. There's one problem. Simon is tapping into the wrong power. The wrong power. And uh, number two today is you can experience power in your life the wrong way. The wrong way. Here's what the commentary says when I was doing my research preparing for this sermon. In the days of the early church, sorcerers and magicians were numerous and influential. They worked wonders, performed healings, exorcism, practiced astrology. Their wonders may simply have been magic tricks or the sorcerers may have been empowered by Satan. Simon had done so many wonders that some even thought he was a Messiah. But his powers did not come from God. I'm going to say that again, but his powers did not come from God. And that is the key to knowing the difference between what kind of power are you tapping into? You have to go back to the source. 
And are you seeing power and success in your life by the Holy Spirit? Or are you seeing power and success in your life because you're tapping into an evil spirit, Satan, or demonic powers? The Bible reminds us that there are false prophets out there, false messiahs who would say they can do miracles. Matthew 24, 24 says the following, false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 says the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. So did you know it's possible to see healings and powers and miracles, not by God, but by demonic, satanic activity? The Bible calls it counterfeit miracles. And how is that possible? Here's how this is possible, because we can be tapping into the wrong power. And how do we do that? Well, some people like to talk to the dead or talk to spirits. When you go see a psychic, horoscopes, new age philosophy, palm readings, palm readings, fortune tellings, good luck charms, musicians who tap into super, supernatural powers. When you believe in superstitions, magic arts, which employ maybe yoga, out of body experiences, predicting the future, Ouija boards, secret groups, satanic worship, use of witchcraft, sorcery, worship of any other kind, fascinations with occult movies, the occult, cult of any time, and on and on it goes. Simon represents people in life who have the ability to do powerful things, but the wrong way, the wrong way. And he was having all the success because he had a large following. This is something we have to be careful too because success in life does not mean we are doing it the right way. When we see other people who have power and influence or in positions of power, or when we see people who have success, who have large followings on social media or have money or have lots of friends, ask yourself this question, are they doing it the right way by God's spirit, by the Holy Spirit, or are they doing it by evil power, evil power? Now, how does that look like in our day-to-day -day life? Think about all the books and movies we've seen in the past uh, 10 years, like um, Dan Brown and the Da Vinci Code, Harry Potter and its series about witches and wizards, Fifty Shades of Grey, which focuses on these sexual themes. You know, why are these books and movies successful? Are they successful because the writers are really good writer? They know how to make a story. They know how to make a plot. Or are they successful because they're tapping into a kind of power that is not the Holy Spirit, but very dark? What about the recent Netflix uh, series, uh, Squid Game? I kept seeing all these articles about Squid Game, Squid Game, Squid Game, this. I finally decided I need to figure out what is a Squid Game. So I decided to watch the trailer. Wow, after watching the trailer, I thought, no, this is not something I am going to watch. Intriguing, but at the same time, when I watched this, the, the trailer, very eerie and very creepy. Now, is this show popular? Because again, the director, the writer, the actors, they're all amazing. The plot is amazing. It draws you in. It's intriguing. Or are they tapping into a dark power? And is that why it's successful? What about certain people we follow on social media? Politicians, singers, models, socialites, athletes. Ask yourself this question. Are these people following the Holy Spirit? Or are they tapping into a wrong power? What about Halloween and other festivals and celebrations we do? Are these celebrations and holidays following the Holy Spirit? Or are they tapping into a dark power? How many of you know actually the the roots of Halloween? How many of you know what are the roots of Halloween? Halloween is actually considered a pagan holiday and here's why. And the ancient Celtic tribes who lived in Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and Brittany. For the Celts, November 1st marked the beginning of a new year of winter coming. So the night before, which is October 31st, they celebrated a festival called Samhain, which means summer ends. During the festival, they believe souls of the dead, including ghosts, goblins, witches return to mingle with those who are living. In order to scare these evil spirits, they wore masks and they would light bonfires. 
When the Romans conquered the Celts, they added to these traditions by apply like applies for nuts for Pomona, the Roman goddess of orchards, and the Romans also bobbed for apples and drank cider. So the festival of Halloween is pagan. Now in 835, Pope Gregory in the Catholic Church moved the date. They used to commemorate martyrs and saints, people who have died in their faith for God. It used to be celebrated May 13th, and he decided to move it to May 1st to override the holiday and called it the night. So that night before, they call it All Hallows' Eve, Holy Evening, and called Halloween for short. On that night, the people would get together, the Catholic people would get together to pray, worship, and remember those who've gone on before us. So, all that to say, without realizing it, we could be like Simon, and maybe we're not doing rituals, and we're not doing dark magics, and we're not going and casting spells, but are we tapping into a power that is supporting things or people who are not following the Holy Spirit. Ask yourself these questions. Do the people I follow on social media, the things that I read, the books that I read, the magazines I read, the movies I watch, what I do, does it please the Holy Spirit? Or am I tapping into a wrong power? Now, that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 20, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. Other translations say all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. I want you to think about this very clearly. You can do whatever you want in life because God gives us free will. You can do whatever you want. You can celebrate any holiday you want. You can follow any person you want. You can read whatever. You can talk the way you want. You can watch whatever movie you want. But I ask you this question sincerely as a pastor and as a person called by God to do his work. Is what you're doing, is it beneficial to you? And is it benefiting your children? Does it help you in your walk with God? And are you pleasing the Holy Spirit? The Bible says that when Philip preached, people were baptized. And it says Simon also believed and was baptized too. And then word got to Peter and John, two other disciples, and they came to Samaria to see what was going on. And they laid hands on the people and then those folks received the Holy Spirit. Now, why did these people receive the Holy Spirit after or not the time that they believed? Because we understand in the Bible that when you believe and confess that Jesus is Lord, the Holy Spirit enters you. Now, many scholars have many debates on this as to why this happened after or not the same time. And I'm not, uh, that could be a whole sermon on itself. And I will not spend too much time on it. But in this instant, they received it after. And for me, it doesn't bother me because the whole point is they received it. So whether you receive it at the time of conversion or after, I'm not here to debate that, but I know that uh, the Bible says that when you give your heart to Jesus Christ, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened. I think the reason it happened after the fact is so that it was a witness to Simon the sorcerer because we're going to see how this is going to impact him. So the Bible says in verse 18, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. And number three today is we cannot manipulate God's power. We cannot. So what just happened here? Like Simon saw Philip preaching the gospel. He saw the signs and wonders. The Bible says he believed and baptized. And the question is, did he really? Did he really believe in Jesus Christ? Based on the actions here, because Simon's now asking for the power by giving money, it appears he's confused. And this reminds me today that even if you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you do the, 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 you confess that Jesus is Lord and then you do the outward thing, which is to be baptized, you can still be confused. Your heart and your head have to match. You either believe in Jesus Christ and he's Lord and Savior or you don't. And you can't mix it. You can't mix it with other religions. You can't just add. You can't do those things. Because God is not confused. He's not. So when he saw Peter and John was able to lay hands and then those folks received the Holy Spirit, they received power, he was like, I want that same power too. So he's like, I'm going to give you some money and can you please give me that power? He wanted to buy God's 
power. Why? Because he likes the control. And here's what the commentary says. He wanted to control the working of the spirit and regarded the, the Holy Spirit as a power he can use as he wanted instead of a person who ruled his life. Now, have you been doing that with God? Have we been treating God like a power to be used rather than letting the power of God use us? You know, I think we're all guilty of this in our walk with the Lord. God, if you do this for me, if you heal me, if you open a door, let me have this kid. If you let me get married, if you give me money, then I'll worship you. Then I'll praise you. Then I'll love you. But we forget that God is at the center of the universe and we are not. And God created us to serve him, not the other way around. And we forget that the Lord, he is God and he has power and he is the king of kings. He's our savior. He's our help. He's not some sort of asset. He's not some sort of blanket that we take around to comfort us or a piece of a teddy bear to comfort us. He is Lord. And we forget who we are. We are trying to elevate ourselves when we should be elevating him. John says in the word of God, I, he must become greater and I must become less. And so are you letting the Holy Spirit take full control? Does he have full control of your life? Are you letting the Holy Spirit help you to honor God with your body so that you're not abusing your body? Are you letting the Holy Spirit take full control in, in your money, in your kids, in your marriage, in your job, in your relationship? Does the Holy Spirit have full control of your mind? Do you let your mind wander and go to wrong thoughts? Does the Holy Spirit have full control of your mouth and where you go? Does he have full control of your life, of your life? You know what? Peter in this story picked up on Simon's uh, motive and he says in verse 20, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Peter said the gift is from God and you can't manipulate God and you can't manipulate his work. And he's like, we're not doing this for money. So he rebukes him, tells him you're not going to have any part because your heart is not right with God. And we must be careful because God wants us to remember that we are here to serve him. Now, in the Old Testament, Elijah, prophet of God, was able to help a man named Naaman, had leprosy. He told him to go to the river, dip himself, and when he comes up, he will be cleansed. Nahum wanted to give prophet Elisha money, and he's like, no, I can't do that because I we just this is the word of God. This is the work of God. However, Elisha had a servant named Gehazi, and he went back and lied to said to Naaman, no, no, my 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 master, my leader was just being um, naive or too kind. Yes, give me the money. Well, when Gehazi took the money, he got sick as a judgment. And we have to be careful not to fall into that temptation too as we walk with the Lord. You see, Simon is confused. He thinks he can do evil power, do evil work, tap into evil power. He can have success. People can follow him. People call him the great power and then he thinks he can believe in Jesus Christ and he thinks he can be baptized and then he thinks he can buy God's power and be manipulated but none of this is right none of it is of God on the outside it looks spiritual it looks like God but really it's fake spirituality it's inauthentic spirituality it's counterfeit spirituality false spirituality trying to attain something trying to obtain power but the wrong way and his motive was all wrong and it had nothing to do with the holy spirit or jesus christ simon is an example of what we call displaced misplaced religion believes in god's power but not interested in having a relationship with jesus christ hmm. peter says your heart is not right with god and how many people are living like this today? How many people have said, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ and maybe even have, have been baptized, yet they have a very miserable, very inauthentic 
unfulfilled life. How many people around the world would say they're spiritual people, religious people, but they do not know Jesus Christ. And in fact, they are bound by evil powers and are not really free at all. Because their hearts are not right with God. So I say to you today, is that your situation? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, but you're still tapping into dark powers? Or maybe you're not even a believer in Jesus Christ and you're tapping into dark powers. Or maybe you're like confused. What is the solution to this problem? Look what Peter says to him, verse 22, repent of this weakness, pray the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see you are full of bitterness and captive of sin. Peter, Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me that nothing you have said may happen to me. And this is number four today, repent and pray for forgiveness. This story tells us that we need to, what we need to do if we've been viewing God the wrong way, treating him the wrong way, and if we've been tapping into the wrong power. And if we haven't been letting the Holy Spirit take full control, Peter says, repent, ask God for forgiveness. You know what repentance means? It means to walk away from sin. It means to turn away from sin. Now, it doesn't mean to say sorry. You don't just say, sorry, God, I did this and then go back to doing it. No, repentance means I'm done. I'm moving in the other directions. You show in your actions that you're serious about your sin. Today, what sin do you need to repent to God? Do you need to say, Lord, I repent. I have read horoscopes. I went to see a psychic. I did palm reading. Lord, I repent. I have watched shows or movies that are not pleasing to you. Lord, I repent. I have read literature that are not good for me. Lord, I repent. I've used my eyes the wrong way. Lord, I repent. I have abused my body in the wrong way. Lord, I repent. I celebrated or were part of festivals or celebrations or holidays that do not align with your values. Lord, I repent. I did not forgive someone who hurt my feelings. Lord, I repent. I have not let the Holy Spirit take full control. Lord, I repent. I have not put my faith in Jesus Christ. I believe in another religion and I need to get things right with you. And today I want to say Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my savior. He's my redeemer, my helper, and I am forgiven of sin. And I believe in your death and I believe in your resurrection that you are God and God alone. I believe today you and I want to tap into the right power. I really do. And you know, I really appreciated this story because it really showed to me that there are two different powers working in this world. The power of God, the good power, the power of the Holy Spirit, and then there's evil power that is being led by Satan and his agents, whom are demons. But today I believe you and I don't want to be like Simon because the Bible says Simon, Simon was told by Peter, may God remove that bitterness in your heart and the captivity of sin. And I believe today that many of you do not want to live in your sin. You don't want to live in your drunken state and your sexually impure state and your, your jealous state or envy state or your addicted state or your broken state. You want to be free. And guess what? You can have that by having a relationship with Jesus Christ and tapping into the right power and let the Holy Spirit take full control in your life. Today, the courage you have to say to your family and friends is I believe in Jesus and no one else. I'm not mixing. I'm not putting different things together. Today, you might need to say to the Lord, I want to have that courage and I want to have that power. And give me the strength, God, to say no when temptation rises. We have learned the following today. You can tap into the right power, which is God's power. You can tap into the wrong power, which is Satan and evil. Sometimes we think we can manipulate God and he does not want to be manipulated. And lastly today, you can repent and ask God for forgiveness. I believe that is our desire today. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we open our hearts to you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this story. Thank you for the obedience of Philip and Peter and John. Thank you for showing us how Simon was confused and was tapping into the wrong power. And today we believe and declare we do not want to be 
aligning ourselves with dark powers or evil powers or demonic powers or unclean spirit. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that we would be focused and keep our eyes on Jesus and keep our eyes on you because you alone are king and king in our life. One day you will return and we need to be ready. There's somebody who's watching this video and they have not maybe given their heart to Jesus Christ. So I say to them today, may they say this prayer, Lord Jesus, come in to my heart. I believe you are God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I believe you rose on the third day. I believe because of your blood and the body broken, that sin no longer has control in my life. But the Holy Spirit who lives in me has full control. And I want to surrender my life to the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for who you are. And we thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.